What's the word, y'all? 11, 12, 13. A 13 game slate is criminal, NBA. How do you expect anybody to lock into your league if there's 13 games in on this? They're going on at the same time. So obviously, I did not get to watch all 13 games, but I will talk about some things that I did see today. Leave a like, let's get into it. Let's talk about my presenting sponsor, Price Picks. Hit that link in the description and use code Kenny because they're matching up to $100 deposits for all new customers. Now there are already so many people in the community that have hit the link and use code Kenny. Over here, we're just gonna show a bunch of people that have already won on entries. If you didn't know what Prize Picks is, it is just you versus the numbers. So as I'm recording this, the Kings are about to score off against the Spurs. I see De'Aaron Fox is at 22 and a half, and I decide if I pick De'Aaron Fox, do I think he's gonna have a better game than 22 and a half or a worse game than 22 and a half? So I was just super fun to stroll through and, and figure out which plays you think are the best. I be thinking about matchups, who's guarding who, it's just a lot of great fun. So here are the players that I picked for my entry. There are two different payout options, right? I got my flex play and my power play. Flex means that if I get one wrong here, I can still walk out in the green at a 1.5x. But power play means that I need all four of these to hit for me to hit, and the payout is 10x. So hit that link in the description. Join in on the phone with the rest of the community. Use code Kenny, and they're matching every deposit up to $100 for new players. I appreciate prize picks again. Let's get back to the video. So we're going to start with my favorite team. whoop de do Kenny, you want to talk about the Bulls? Not really, though. Um, There's a team, the team they went against today, the Dallas Mavericks, a team I want to talk about for some time now. And I finally got to actually watch like every single possession of a game because y'all know when I'm watching four games at the same time, I'm obviously missing things. So I've said here before, um, that even though going into this game, the Dallas Mavericks were seven and three, which is one of the better records in the league, they look bad. And a lot of people are, a lot of people in the conversation is like, Kenny, that makes no sense. They have a positive record, like a, a well above 500 record. How the heck you say that they look bad? And, and now that I've actually got to watch every possession of a game, I can explain it. Now I'm not using this game as a sole reason behind it, but I've said this before and some Mavericks fans that I follow that are literally watching every possession have also said the same thing about them not looking good enough to beat good teams so far this season they're seven and four and their seven wins got a bit kind of cupcakey you feel me so they've had the six easiest schedule on the season and their wins have come against the pelicans the big one was against the celtics but is that a big one because the celtics haven't looked that good but luke hit the game winner never so that's the one people remember the spurs who they beat they beat the kings uh, they beat the Spurs again, they beat the Rockets, they beat the Raptors before the Raptors went on their win streak, and those are their wins. Now, their losses are getting blown out by Atlanta, blown out by the Nuggets, blown out by the Heat, and now blown out by the Bulls. As you can see, the games they've lost have been against good slash playoff caliber teams, and the games that they've won have been against bad teams. Now, there's nothing wrong with being bad teams. If you're going to make the playoffs, you need to be bad teams, but you also need to be able to have a little mixture of winning against those solid teams, right? And I finally got to see it and, and kind of give y'all my opinion on how they get to the situation where they're losing against these solid teams. The very first one, number one, priority number one that they need to get uh, fixed out. That man Luca is so out of shape, it's crazy. <laughs> and he's so at there. There are some players in the league that come into camp slash come into the season extremely out of shape, and we can tell. James Harden has done it a lot in his career. He's currently going through that. Jokic did it a lot early in his career, but guess what? He started to get in shape and he, he won an MVP, he won an MVP award. And he's he hasn't looked back. And Luka's another one of these players that come in and, and, and just extremely out of shape. He did it last year. And similar to last year, he started off the season kind of struggling so far this year. I don't know what the shooting splits are, but I can tell you they ain't great. I love Luka a lot, man. He's one of the more fun players to watch. So far this season, shoot a 44% from the field and 28% from three. Now, he's never been a great three-point shooter. He's a high-volume high, high volume guy that can also get pretty hot sometimes and hit step-back contested threes for game like he did against, um, against Boston. But number one, they got to get Luka in shape. Number two, you got to get Luka more help. Now... When, when people ask about the Dallas Mavericks to me, what do they need for Luka and to, to go overboard? I always say they need another ball handler on the team. And luckily for them, a guy like Jalen Brunson, who didn't have a great game today, um, has stepped it up when, you know, he was in a starting lineup. He was averaging 28 points per game. Then they moved him back to the bench on a different role. Bringing in Gordon Dragic, which had been rumored for the entire offseason, would desperately help this team because they just need another ball handler that you can depend on. Luka's been in the league for now three seasons and 11 games. He's got so many nicknames on Basketball Reference. The Matador, El Matador, Cool Hands, The Don, Wonderboar, El Nino, Mar Maravella. I don't, I, I don't know Spanish. S um, Swaggy L. 
That's why I cut that's why I cut the line. There is no swaggy L. Once you use something in someone else's nickname and it's iconic like Swaggy P, you don't just throw a random no, don't call me Kenny no more. I'm Swaggy K. That don't even hit the same. Anyway, on top of Luka not playing to the great way we see him play every single season, they got a lot of players in their rotation that have been extremely dud. Um, Adore Finney Smith has been terrible offensively. He had a crazy chase down block today. Um, Porzingis has been in and out of the lineup, but for the most part, Porzingis has looked pretty decent this season. Maxi Kleber in and out of the lineup. Um, um, what's, what's his name? What is his name? Willie Cauley Stein? Terrible. Dwight Powell is not very good. They just don't have an amazing, they don't have a really good orchestrated roster. They just have a guy that seems like he could be a generational talent. I was very um, skeptical about the Jason Kidd hire. And for the most part, I understand some of the offensive things Jason Kidd is trying to do. I think at the beginning of the season, the very first game when they ended up getting blown out by Atlanta, I was I made a video where I was telling you <laughs> that like Doran Fenny Smith was shooting like like in post post up touches and and or Willie Cauley Stein was shooting mid ranges. Some of that has gone away, and I understand the idea behind their offense. They just haven't really been able to hit shots as an entire team. Um, even though they're seven and four, I'm still guessing that they're going to be a playoff team. But in order for the Dallas Mavericks to hit the next step, and for them the next step is to win a championship, because you maxed out your guy Luca and you got Porzingis for the foreseeable future, the next step is get another ball handler that you trust and that's pretty solid, and get to the point where where Luca trusts the organization enough that he'll come into camp in shape. So you don't have to play catch up. Again, they're seven and four, so it's not that big of a but you understand what I'm saying. Hopefully. Um, shout out to the Bulls, though. Good win. Another good win for the Bulls. That's great. All right, let's talk about the first nationally televised game of the day where we had two of the worst teams in the league go head-to-head -to, -head to see who can end up with Chet Holmgren. Um, it was a number one versus number two pick, Kate Cunningham versus Jalen Green. And this is on national TV because, obviously, first two picks. But there's, like, a little fake beef or whatever. You know, Jalen Green had made some comments after the draft, and Detroit Pistons fans obviously did not like that, so they've been... Marking this on their calendar is their their NBA Finals. And guess what? Pistons fans, you did it. Both of these players look really good, right? Um, I've mentioned this draft class is amazing. But I just think it's funny that the play that went viral from this entire game is the Jalen Green climb the ladder. Boom! He talking trash to K. You're like, oh my God. I don't think he scored after that. <laughs> I legit don't think he scored at all in the fourth quarter after that. So it's like, that's the one that went viral. But over, you get what I'm saying? Um... I just, I wonder how long this fake beef is going to last because it feels very one-sided. It's like Jalen Green versus Detroit, but not even the Detroit Pistons. It's versus the city of Detroit because <laughs> Kate Cunningham does not care. He said his post-game interview, like, it, it was a lot of talking. I don't care. I, I got to win, and that's all I care about. It le legitimately is like Pistons fans versus Jalen Green, and that's it. How long, will this last the entirety of their career? Are we going to tether these two players together like this? You know what I'm saying? Like we tether Luka and Trey Young. But Luka and Trey Young don't got no animosity. Them boys are homies. Is this a rivalry to be? And in seven years, I can't even say they're going to make the finals because I hate watching the Houston Rockets, bro. It made this game extremely hard to watch. I was in and out of this game because I thought this was going to be a team with, with Kevin Porter Jr. Jalen Green, first of all, Kevin Porter Jr. has been very disappointing to me as a fan. I thought he was going to, you know, have a little breakout. Um... To have these players, uh, Christian Wood, you even got Sin going off the bench. I thought this was going to be a fun team to watch, but it's just isolation, isolation. And if I can't score in isolation and we don't score as a team, it's hard to watch. And we were joking about, hey, this team might win 15 games. I'm, I'm close to betting the under on the 15, my boy. Because <laughs> it ain't it ain't good. Um, K. Cunningham ended up with 20 points. And what the surprising stat to me was the three assists. Because I swear to God, he created so many more shots than three assists. But I remember... He plays for the Pistons, <laughs> and not a lot of people are making um, open shots on the Pistons. So I definitely can see him as a dude that's gonna average eight points, um, a, a, not eight points, but eight assists per game once he's actually got teammates around him that can score. But nasty televised game. Luckily, it ended up being relatively close in the long run. But I can, I would love to see the the ratings on this on this game. Compare it to the second nasty televised game, where it's Heat versus Lakers. I want to see which one had more views, and I, I could, I have an idea. Let's quickly talk about that game. The Lakers pull out another overtime win. Again, very terrible for my sleep schedule. The fact that I'm recording this at 1 a.m. Because the Lakers always make a game more difficult than it needs to be. But it's good entertainment, right? Every Lakers game this season, well, majority of them, have been 
nothing but comedy slash entertainment. And you love to see that. Russell Westbrook, big fourth quarter, and then comes down and takes his patented contested three-point shot that never goes in, and now we go to overtime. And the Heat, my boy Duncan, my guy Bam, who, who he was 10 for 10 at the free throw line and then missed the clutches one in the game. That's kind of crazy. Duncan shooting one for three from the free throw, kind of crazy. Missed some huge, huge free throws down the stretch. Five second violations game. We had two five second violations in, in three nights. That doesn't happen in the NBA. The Lakers were trying their hardest to give it away, but they got it because Malik Monk was incredible. Anthony Davis, pretty solid. Russell Westbrook, pretty solid. You know, clutch buckets here and there. Dwight Howard fouled out in the fastest time I've seen with my own two eyes. Faster, Jaden McDaniels fouled out in 12 minutes early this season. I remember I made a tweet about that. Dwight Howard matched him. 11 minutes. Better. He's he's just better. Snubbed off the off the NBA 75. You got to be kidding me. All right, so the last couple ones might be a little bit rapid fire because I was in and out of the games, these games. Because remember, 13 games slate? And y'all know I got to focus heavily on the Bulls. So I'm like, let's talk about the first game of the night. It was the Wizards versus the, the Cavaliers. I was excited for this game, man. You know, two of the better teams in the Eastern Conference that nobody expected to be this good. I think the Wizards are the number one team in the East standings-wise at the moment. Now, you're tied with my Bulls. We'll see y'all soon. Um, but a crazy end to this game, similar to the Miami Heat. If you miss free throws, you're going to leave the door open. I think Ricky Rubio missed a free throw or two down the stretch. And that allowed Kyle Kuzma to hit two huge, huge threes. The thing I like the most about this Washington Wizards team... I think in their, I'm going to have to search this up really, really quick. I think in their last five games, they haven't allowed anybody to score over 100 points, which is ridiculous in the NBA. Um, yeah, so they held the Cavs under 100, the Bucks under 100, the Grizzlies under 100. Oh, so that's three. But that's still a great streak. That's three games that they held people under 100. And now they're the, the quote-unquote best team in Easter Conference standing-wise. Um, and, and, and Bradley Beal. Had a bad game. Four for 19, one for five from three. But one thing that Wes Unsell Jr. did amazingly in this game was use Bradley Beal as a decoy. Listen, you don't always have to get the end of shot to your best player, even though he is your best player. He he let my boy uh, Bradley Beal be a be a decoy for Kyle Kuzma to hit two huge, huge shots. Um, the Cavs losing this game does suck. But just remember, three nights ago, y'all stole a game from Toronto that you didn't deserve to win. So, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord take it away. You know, so um, they're going to... Shout out to Isaac Okoro, though, by the way. He's the reason that Bradley Beal struggled so much this game. I know the jury is still out on Colin Sexton as a player. Some people really love him. Some people really hate him. One thing is for sure, his ability to score the ball is a necessity for this Cavs team. So I'm... I, you know, I'm I'm worried about them being able to score without Kyle Sexton in the lineup because Isaac Okoro, as good of a defender defender he is, that dog can't put the ball in the in the basket. So maybe Rick should start. He had a 20 off the bench. Rick and Darius Garland together has been two of the best like individual advanced stats backcourt in the entire league. So maybe start him, but maybe you need that kick off the bench. Um, so I don't I don't really know. The Bucks beat the <laughs> they beat the Knicks in Madison Square Garden. Um, Tom Thibodeau, game plan, always pack the paint, pack the paint, pack the paint. We're going against Giannis. Don't let Giannis beat us. So, Giannis is like, okay, it won't be me. It's going to be our, my white boys, my Pat Connaughton's and my, my Grayson Allen. The, the Bucks deserve a lot of credit for trading for Grayson Allen and understanding that last year when he was with Memphis in the limited time he got, well, not limited, he averaged like 25 minutes per, but in the time that he got, he was like a 40% catch-and-shoot player and he plays with some intensity on defense. Those are the type of players we need. We're going to trade for him and before he even plays a game, we're going to give him a contract because we believe that he can be a good rotational player. He's been really good for him this year, big-time shots, and Pat Connaughton turned into uh, Reggie Miller. <laughs> they ended up with 26 made threes as a team. The Knicks are gonna eventually gonna have to start to guard the three-pointer. Um, today was not that day. Okay, CR four and six and on a three-game win streak. Hello. Um, the only reason I want to talk. First of all, I didn't watch a single second of this game. Not not one. But the reason I want to talk about this is the the Pelicans are really the worst team in the entire NBA. Are they really the worst? <laughs> Are they the worst team in the entire NBA? So right now, standing-wise, they are dead last because if you have the 1-10 Rockets and they're 1-11. When do they play against each other? I need to see the battle of the of the battle of the, the uh, scrubs. December 5th, mark it on your calendar. 
I just, I just don't, I don't understand. I mean, I understand that Zion is not there and Brandon Ingram is not there. What is, what, what, what do you do with this Pelican season at this point? So Nikola Jokic, boom, hit Markeith more so, so bad that he was on the bench today with his hat over his eyes with whiplash. Um, and because of that, he got suspended for a game. And, um, <laughs> give, give Michael, coach Michael Malone, coach of the, I don't want to give him coach of the year because there are some, there are a lot of coaches out there that are coaching their butt off. Today, Michael Malone outcoached Rick Carlisle. There's no reason for a team that is missing three max players to go in against a team that, again, struggling with a little bit of injury work. But for the most part, the Pacers are healthy. They're missing TJ Warren. TJ Warren looked kind of big on the bench. He, he, obviously, he's out of shape with all those the surgeries and injuries and everything. This is a team that, for the most part, is not injured. They had a Jokic that was suspended. They got Jamal Murray out and Michael Porter Jr. for the foreseeable future, and they won a game against a team that should be pretty solid. Now, I don't know if we should be overreacted to the Nuggets winning or overreacted to the Pacers losing because Rick Carlisle has not been the positive impact that you want to see when you do nothing but upgrade your coach. Uh, but wow, Will Barton. I, I made a bet on prize picks today that Will Barton was going to be the guy to take off. Now, the other things on my, my entry did not hit, but the Will Barton thing did because Will Barton is the real deal. Like, like, yes, if they had him in the playoffs last season, it might have been a little bit more competitive when we got to that second round. Um, who else? Who else? Bones. He said in this post-game interview, I already know I'm a fan favorite. You are, because there was a move. He did like a spin move, but a boom, dish off to I forget who it was for a dunk. Bones Highland, good. But we got to talk about Zeke Naji. Zeke Naji has Bobo buried as the 15th man on the roster because Zeke Naji is a real player. My only thing I know about Zeke Naji and the only thing I learned about him in his rookie class, he plays the, the piano. A very smart kid. Seven for 10, two threes, and some big defensive stops. I did not watch Frank Kaminsky go out for 31, um, but I like the title that <laughs> NBA.com has. Kaminsky 31 is unlikely hero and Suns top Blazers. In the last game, is you know, when, when I'm watching any team not name the Bulls, I'm very impartial to who wins a game. Um, I was watching Warriors versus Timberwolves. But it ended up being like a 20-point game at one point, and then the Lakers game was getting close. So I was like, I'm going to focus on the Lake show. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to focus on late ver Lakers versus Heat. And as I turned my, my eye to this game, the Minnesota Timberwolves have started to bring it back together. I'm like, yo, I checked the box score and hit 40. I'm like, oh, so now I got to tune back in. And I wanted to see Ant and the Timberwolves win this game. Like I said, I'm impartial to majority of the games, but I wanted to see Ant drop a 50-piece, first of all, but get a win for the Timberwolves because they just been, you know, not not great. It hasn't been great. Wiggins, though, tonight was his night. Dunked on Cat two times. Not one, but two times. He was the guy tonight against his former team, and you could tell Wiggins is not normally a dude that shows emotion. At all. Today, he showed a lot of emotion, being happy after a tip dunk and everything. But for real, though, NBA, stop. Let's, let's, let's not do this 11-game slate thing again. And then tomorrow, we got three games. You can't tell me. <laughs> you cannot tell me that some of these games couldn't have been. We couldn't have evened it out in like a 7 and a 7. I don't know if my math is right there. But it would have been It's way easier to watch. Because there are some games here that I wanted to watch. That I didn't get an opportunity to. Or even some of the games I talked about, I didn't get to watch more like as in-depth as I wanted to. I see De'Aaron Fox had a bounce-back game because he's been kind of trash this season, even though they lost by 20. I would have loved to watch that. Kelly Oubre had 37. I can't even talk about that. Y'all know my relationship with Kelly Oubre. I can't even talk about that because I didn't get to see it. Who am I talking to? The NBA doesn't watch these videos. You do, though. Leave a like. Thank you.